Hello. Time for some more Broken Twigs, Farewell to Fairy Forest, written by Charlotte Taylor and illustrated by Kezia Crossley. I'm afraid we've left Twigs in a bit of a predicament at the end of Chapter 3. She's been chased all the way through the forest and now is busy hiding out. I hope she doesn't get caught by those fairy guards. I know she's really mischievous, but I can't help but like her. Well, I can see that my fairy friends who are peeking in at my window are rather excited for Chapter 4. I hope you are too. It's called, Is Revenge Best Served Cold? As the afternoon sun shone overhead, Twix began to feel oh, drowsy. And with the soothing chirping of the birds seeming like a lullaby, she found her eyelids getting heavier and heavier just when she was about to drift off into a pleasant afternoon nap she heard happy chatting down below jumping up she almost clapped her hands with glee time for some espionage glimpsing downward through the greenery she watched as tooth fairies appeared from amongst the adjacent trees Carrying their latest hoard from the previous night's excursions, they approached a colossal machine in the centre of the glade. Made from items discarded by humans, the tooth grinder had a big tilted plastic funnel at one end, which was reached by standing on a little wooden ladder. This was the entry point for the teeth. The funnel was connected to a long tubular section made from a segment of garden hosepipe which fed the teeth into the grinding compartment. This part of the machine was made from an old wooden wine barrel that had three metal strips along its girth. On top of the barrel was an open hatch where a tooth fairy or two would be positioned. Their job was to pour in a secret liquid potion contained in a bronzed conch seashell. At the other end, the enchanted dust then poured out via another piece of hosepipe into a huge hole in the ground, which led to the fey mines. Twigs thought she would never tire of the sight of the fairy dust cascading down into the hole like a gorgeous iridescent waterfall. It was breathtaking. She would no idea how the teeth were ground down inside the barrel or the components which made this possible, for she would not yet managed to breach that secret. Nor did she know the ingredients of the magical potion, but it was something she was determined to discover. Several tooth fairies used small barrows to dump bags of collected teeth at the base of the entry chute, while the others claimed their positions alongside or on top of the great machine. Once everyone was in place, the chief tooth fairy pressed her thumbprint to a small oval mother-of-pearl disc on the barrel's side. As the machine whirred to life, one of the fairies climbed the little ladder and several more began to pass up to him tooth after tooth after tooth. He tossed them into the funnel and the grinding soon began. Twix's eyes travelled along to where the fairies were waiting with the secret potion on top of the barrel. Her breath hitched. She peered forward while squinting. Ooh, perfect! Who do we have here? She chuckled as she tapped her fingertips together happily. She'd spotted Clara. A few weeks earlier, this honest and good fairy had reported Twigs to the Fairy Queen for stealing some stores from the honeybees' hives. Of course, it was true, but Twigs thought Clara should have minded her own business. She was a meddling pest and Twigs was adamant she would get her own back on her. I mean, why should she care if the bees have enough honey to feed themselves through the winter? I don't care. She huffed as she felt the anger creeping up inside her again. The revengeful fairy watched while Clara chatted to her companion as she began to get ready to pour the special transparent liquid into the hatch opening. Scanning the area behind the machine, Twig spotted an old beech tree which was nearer to Clara than the tree where she was perched. That'd make a great hiding place until she'd figured out how she was going to punish her rival. She knew she was spiteful and mean, but she felt justified in her feelings. And this was why she never looked 
form any kind of relationship with any fae in the forest. She couldn't trust them. She flew quickly along the treetops, and once at the beech tree, half in the shadows of the leaves, she knew she couldn't be seen. A genius idea presented itself to her, and she quickly reached into her bag and pulled out the large blackberry she'd been saving. Wasting no time, she aimed the fruit at Clara's back just as the unsuspecting fairy was tilting the shell over the hatch. Twigs let the fruit fly. It soared through the air and found its target beautifully. As the blackberry exploded all over her, Clara let out a high squeal. Twigs took great delight in seeing that the purple juice had stained Clara's hair and clothes. Good. But then, as Clara struggled to keep her balance, which had been compromised through the impact of the missile, she involuntarily let go of the big potion-containing shell. It fell down, 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 through the hatch and into the darkness of the machine below. Oh dear, what have you done, Twigs? I guess we'll find out in chapter five. I do hope you'll join me then.